China sentenced a former property tycoon and the son of a high-ranking official to 18 years in prison. That's after he was charged with corruption. But some suspect the real reason behind his punishment is something entirely different. China sentenced a former property tycoon who once called Communist Party leader Xi Jinping a clown to 18 years in prison. Ren Jiqiang was charged with corruption, bribery, misappropriation of public funds and abuse of power by state-owned company personnel. That's according to a court statement released on Tuesday. Some critics called it an especially harsh sentence amid an ongoing clampdown on dissent. The communist regime has been known to use corruption and bribery charges to punish dissidents. Rumors have been circulating that when Rin's trial began on September 11th, he pled guilty to all charges. But according to Taiwan's central news agency, an insider says Rin refused to plead guilty to most charges. No media outlets were allowed to witness the trial. Only a few of Rin's relatives were granted permission to attend. As a result, Rin's real response is unclear. Rin is 69 years old and a former chairman of a state-owned real estate group. He's been nicknamed Canon Wren for his outspoken views posted on social media. He was detained in March after referring to Xi as a clown stripped naked who insisted on continuing being emperor. Wren made the comment following a speech Xi made in February about the regime's efforts to combat the virus. One of his articles also criticized the Communist Party. He wrote, the root cause of the problem is a ruling party that is not supervised by the people and goes unchecked by the law. The system only serves the leader's power and his core interests. Rin was later investigated for a serious disciplinary violation and expelled from the Communist Party. Rin's father was a former Chinese deputy minister of the country's Ministry of Commerce. Being the son of a high-ranking Communist Party official, harsh punishments for people like him are rare. And the European Union launched the first EU-Taiwan investment forum in Taipei on Tuesday. It signals Europe's warming economic relationship with the democratic island and growing skepticism with China. Now it is up to us to take it forward. The historic forum is organized by the European bloc's de facto embassy in Taiwan and involves 15 European countries, including Germany, France, the Netherlands, Italy, and Spain. Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen says a bilateral investment agreement, or BIA, will help build stronger economic ties, and Taiwan is ready to partner with the bloc in IT, biotech, and health sectors. The island is famous for its technology and semiconductor industries. A BIA is the key to this success and will help us all thrive in the digital age. The head of the European Economic and Trade Office says the pandemic has exposed the vulnerabilities of global supply chains, and Taiwan could be a great partner as the EU adapts to these challenges because it shares the same values of an open, transparent and fair international trading system. The European Union and Taiwan have unique possibilities to work together and embrace the new opportunities in this changing world. All dancers and business models will not any longer work in the future. Uh, we better change before we have to. The European Union's more friendly posture toward Taiwan follows signals of a closer U.S.-Taiwan relationship. Two high-level U.S. officials have visited the island in the past few weeks. Meanwhile, the EU has taken a stronger stance against China. In a recent summit, it called on China to open up markets and respect human rights. The EU was the fourth largest trade partner with Taiwan in 2019, and its trade with the island was about $24 billion in the first half of this year. And each year in France, monuments and museums are given special attention and are celebrated over two days. The French call them Heritage Days, and museums and historic sites are open to the public. Our France correspondent David Vives visited Europe's oldest public library in Paris, where he discovered treasures from centuries past. One book at a time, wisdom and knowledge have accumulated here. With 600,000 books, including 200,000 historical ones, the Mazarin Library of Paris looks more like a sanctuary than a library. Our collections are exceptional. We are in a museum, 5,000 manuscripts and 2,500 books printed in 15th century. The place was created by Cardinal Mazarin, chief minister to King Louis XIV. 
This is the first public library in Europe, and since the 15th century, it's carried on its mission to make knowledge accessible to everyone. It's a fountain of knowledge for historians, students, researchers, authors, and even movie directors wishing to tell stories from the past. We are here in the section where are all books over the art of war, the using of weapons, the siege warfare, uniform designs. All books are freely accessible, except for these. This is our sanctuary. Here are the most precious books of our heritage, prestigious, rare and fragile. We have here, for example, the first book ever printed, the Gutenberg Bible. Here lies one of the oldest books on mathematics in existence, the translation of ancient Greek philosopher Euclid's Elements in Latin. The principles of this book are still taught in schools today. Sorday says the book is almost a thousand years old. We have two columns of Latin text, which is a translation, and algebraic schemes affixed to the margin of the text. Some books are treasures unto themselves, such as this 14th century manuscript called a missal, with illuminations made with precious materials, including gold. This was a book for priests, used to celebrate holy events following a calendar. The decor is made of a tangle of plants with fantastic animals. You can tell it's just before the Renaissance, as the paintings use geometric perspectives, light attenuation to create the spaces, etc. During the Middle Ages, monks could spend a whole day just writing one page of missiles. Another treasure is a celestial globe, bearing constellations from throughout the heavens. Imagine you're standing in the center of the globe, in the interior, watching the sky all around. This was a present made for King Louis XIV when he was born, a royal gift now residing in an exceptional place. Reporting by David Vivez, NTD News.